is a special presentation of Fox Sports Net. Last week, Furman and Appalachian staged one of the most memorable games in the history of the Southern Conference. A game that included a late twist of fate that stunned the world of college football. Napier throws it to Brigham. He has right. got the first down. First at goal, Furman. He nearly had the touchdown. Napier. Fumbles! Brigham got it! And he's out of bounds! No touchdown! Unbelievable! A lot of real estate to convert. Billy is going to go to the end zone, and it is a touchdown. And he goes to his main man, Bear Reinhardt. And Furman takes a one-point lead with seven seconds to go. As they go for two, Napier throws quickly, and it's intercepted! It's intercepted! Appalachia can take it back for two and take the lead! They've got a chance to take the lead! And it is good! Oh, my! That's a two-pointer! It's 16 to 15! What? It's 16 to 15, Appalachia! What a play! Unbelievable! For the Furman Paladins, they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Today, quarterback Joe Perchette leads first place Appalachian into Statesboro for a very important date with the five-time champs, the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Yes, indeed. They love their Eagles here in Statesboro. A kiss for luck as the Eagles have landed at Paulson Stadium. Set to do battle in their biggest game of the year. First place in the Southern Conference at stake. This gentleman is more than ready as we welcome you to Statesboro, Georgia. And the best 1AA matchup of the day, number three Appalachian against number 13 Georgia Southern here in Statesboro, Georgia. A very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Bob Rathman bidding you welcome to Fox Sports Net and our 1AA coverage today. Appalachian leads the Southern Conference, but lurking right behind them, the Eagles of Georgia Southern, a club that's won this league five straight years and six times overall. They're making their way back. They stumbled out of the gate, did Georgia Southern, losing two of their first three. What with a new head coach, new quarterback, and new fullback? But now they've run in themselves, having won three straight games, and the triple option is up to its old tricks. My partner, as always, is Ethan Horton. And, Ethan, when you talk about the triple option, defending it becomes quite the problem for Appalachian. Their defense is going to be tested. Bob, you're exactly right. When you look at this defense, they have Batman and they have Robin. In this case, Batman and Josh Jeffries. There isn't anything he can't do. Last week, he came up with all the big plays. The few weeks before, he comes up with all the big plays. I mean, here's a guy that's an All-American. He plays very well in the big games. I expect that type of performance today. KT Stovall, this is Robin. He doesn't receive the attention, but he plays major minutes. He plays big-time plays. He does everything well opposite Josh Jeffries and those two defensive ends Bob they have their task today and they gonna have a tough task in stopping this option Georgia Southern has already lost one game in the league they cannot afford another so the pressure shifts to their quarterback Chaz Williams he's about to play the biggest game of his young college career no doubt about it Chaz Williams early in the season a lot of inconsistencies when you look at passing the football rushing the football and his decision making now this is his football team Bob so far he has come on the past few weeks I think today in order for the Eagles to win this football game that option attack this quarterback must be in high gear but Appalachian has lived on the edge all season. They've made the big plays when they needed them. Derek Black, no stranger to that. He'll be tested today in that Appalachian secondary. We'll be back with Paul Crane in the kickoff when we come back after this. The home of the Eagles, Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, where Georgia Southern has won 22 of its last 23 Southern Conference games. The third member of our crew down on the field is Paul Crane. Paul? Bob, so much attention paid to Georgia Southern's top-rated offense. Often overlooked is the fact the Eagles have the top-rated total defense in the conference, and that means Joe Burchett and company will have to be better than they were a week ago. Burchett really struggled against Furman, had a rather heated second-half discussion with his offensive lineman about not getting enough time to throw, and you know Appalachian really only had one drive the entire game. Considering the way Georgia Southern 
often dominates time of possession. Burchett will have to be more effective because he may not get that many chances. On the flip side, Georgia Southern may have to control that football. You mentioned how much they've dug themselves a hole, a loss today. They might not even make the playoffs. Coach Mike Siwak says you lose and you're done. Well, they've got themselves a defensive problem. All-conference defensive tackle Freddie Pescada, who has a banged-up right knee and some other problems. Well, Coach Siwak told me a few moments ago it does not look like Pescada is going to be able to play. He'll be replaced by sophomore Matt Rio from Waycross, Georgia. If nothing else, Rio is smart. He graduated high school with a 4.0 grade point average. He's going to have to figure things out in a hurry here, Bob. Thank you, Paul. We'll check and see on that Georgia Southern defense when they go out. Appalachian won the toss, and they've elected to defer to the second half. Georgia Southern has the option, and they will receive. That's Eric Rockhold getting set to kick things away for the Mountaineers. And the deep man, a great return man. All the way back at the two-yard line on the near side is Ant Williams, and he is waiting to receive this opening kick. Rockhold. And a booming kick. And Ant takes it at the 7. 10, 15, 20 up the middle. 25, 30, and he breaks into the clear. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. The second touchdown return, first on a kickoff for Ant Williams this year. He ran an 87-yard cutback against VMI for six, and he takes the opening kickoff today, 93 yards for a touchdown. Well, they didn't waste any time, Bob. If there was any nerves down there on the sidelines, I'll tell you what, they're gone now with that quick score. Because there's just great blocking at the point of attack, and he just reads it. I mean, right now, he just splits the defenders, and he's off to the races. Nobody's going to catch Ant Williams. Coach just said he likes to take chances. I'll tell you what, that was a big chance for a big score. And the PAT is good. Scott Shelton putting it through to make it 7 0. I'd like to welcome our viewers in Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky who've been watching the Big 12 game between Nebraska and Oklahoma State. You've already missed a lot. A 93 yes. <laughs> yard opening kickoff return for touchdown by Georgia Southern's Amp Williams. And Georgia Southern has taken a 7-0 lead over Appalachian. One more look at the return. And the return team of Appalachian, I mean, they're all in their lanes, but you have to credit Georgia Southern with their blocking. So there are no white jerseys in front of him. It's just a lot of pay dirt, and he takes it to the house. Just what the doctor ordered. Yes, an outstanding start for a young quarterback not to test the field. Now the Mountaineers to receive the Georgia Southern kickoff. And the deep men. Number nine is Jermaine Little. Number three, Derek Black. And Scott Shelton is the man set to kick it away for Georgia Southern. We talked about, and Paul mentioned it a moment ago, about how big this game is for Georgia Southern. In the history of the Southern Conference, only one league champion. Furman in 83 won this conference with two defeats. So you're pretty much kissing your season goodbye with that second conference loss. Appalachian comes into this one unbeaten. Little on the return. Little trying to break free but can't. He's taken down at the 21 yard line. Let's take a look at the Appalachian State offense. And they are led by their outstanding senior quarterback, Joe Perchette. He finds a way to get things done. Seniors in front of him with Vasquez, Washburn, Heron, and Patrick Grant Oliver, a freshman at right tackle. The featured back is their tailback, returning to his native Georgia today, Jerry Beard. And he is the fourth leading rusher in the Southern Conference, expected to carry it early and often today for the Mountaineers. First and 10 from the 21, and there is Beard getting the first carry of the day and out to the 25-yard line. For Georgia Southern defensively, as we check their starting front, we have Matt Rio in at tackle as Piscata has not answered the call, at least on this first series. The linebackers are Butler and Scott and James Burchett starting at the strong side linebacker today. 
The backs are outstanding. The Youngs are great. David is an All-American from Columbia, South Carolina. Second and seven. Beard cuts it back to the 28, maybe 29-yard line. As Hardison made the tackle for Appalachian. Now for uh, Georgia Southern, rather. I think we're going to see a lot of patience by this offense because up front, they have the bigger of the guys. I mean, defensively, Georgia Southern, they're a little small up front, so I expect Jerry Beard to get a lot of touches today. Beard averages just under five yards per carry. He scored four rushing touchdowns this year. Overall, Appalachian gets about 150 yards a game from the tailback spot. Beard cuts it back, and he's got some green grass in front of him. A great block on the corner, and Beard trip as he goes over the 45. A beautiful block by Jermaine Little to get him some extra yardage. Well, he cuts out the back door. This play was designed to go to the front side. I mean, he just sees it. If he keeps his feet, I think he has a possible touchdown, definitely a long gainer. He just loses <laughs> his footing, and he trips the grass, tripped him up. And Jermaine Little delivers a great block, and then he got it right in the chops. <laughs> He's just trying to let that receiver know, Bob, get out of the way. <laughs> First and ten for the Mountaineers, trailing 7-0 here in Statesboro. And the scat back, Jackson, with his first carry. The blue shirts are there waiting for him at the 46, led by James Burchett. No relation to the Appalachian quarterback. Sean Jackson, the mighty mite, 5'6 and 150 pounds. He's a small man, but he's averaging close to five yards per carry. He's a guy that's to change up. Hit them to the outside with 24 and 34 to the inside. From the Appalachian 46. Gopher Jet sets him down second and ten. Joey Hoover, the fullback. To midfield. Hoover caught the touchdown pass last week against Furman. And proved to, to be a key play late in that fourth quarter. Gave Appalachian the lead only to see Furman come back. Take the lead by a point and then lose it on that two-point conversion play. Hoover, a senior from Thomasville, North Carolina. Beard is in. Burchett works out of the gun. Slot to the right. Burchett rolling. Looking. And it is going to be a catch at the 40-yard line. As Devon Foltz made the catch, it was tight to that sideline, but a first down for the Mountaineers. Nice little tight rollback. Chet just sprints out, he waits, and one foot in, that's all you need. I mean, nice little down and out by folks. And here's a guy that you have to pay attention to because he's their big play guy on offense, and he comes up with a big catch for a first down. Folks is the leading receiver on this team. That's his 18th catch of the year. From the Eagles 40, First and ten. Beard to the outside. Gang tackled. Joe Scott, the first man to get to him. Jerry Beard has had some big days last year. Career high 118 yards against East Tennessee. There's the, the veteran, the sage, the head coach of Appalachian, Jerry Moore, the winningest coach in Southern Conference history. Beard. Running right past him on the play was Matt Rio. Artisan came up to make the tackle. So far with this app offense, Coach Jerry Moore, he must feel pretty good about himself because last week they didn't play very well and they were very lucky to come away with a victory. And it appears right now they're moving the ball down the field. And this is a big third down situation here. And now the pads are off and Freddie Fiscata will not play today. The two-time first team All-America, the man who leads this club in tackles, sacks, tackles for losses. He's not in there, and that has to be, Ethan Horton, a major key in this game. Burchett over the middle of folks. He's got it. First down, Mountaineers at the 25. 
Nice route by folks. Good pass by Burchett. Now going back to Freddie Pescada, Bob. It's definitely a huge loss because he brings so much to the defense, to leadership, the tenacity in here. Burchett just finds an open receiver. So they now have to find that from someone else. Folks with the reception and the ball marked at the 26 yard line. So Appalachian shaking off the kickoff return by Ant Williams. They put a nice drive together, first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 26. Beard straight ahead, strong running to the 16. And very close to another Mountaineer first down. Well, that's Jerry Beard at his best, down behind his pads and moving forward. I mean, here's a kid that's not too far away from home, so you know he wants to have a great game today. Not only that, to knock off Georgia Southern. Line doing a good job, too. I can, Bob, now, you can run through that one. <laughs> I can walk through it. I, I don't know about run. Those pads might weigh me down a little bit. Second down and short. And Beard has the first down to the 12-yard line. And you see the line play. And, you know, we talk about the loss of Freddie, and it's plays like that that uh, you just don't see gaping holes like that against the Georgia Southern front wall with parties in there. And right now, the Eagles are having a hard time getting off the blocks and coming into the game. Appalachian State wanted to push the football, push the football, because their offensive linemen, you know, you look at their linemen, they're all seniors, and they've been here before, so they want to really push that pile. Biscata, the senior from Ackworth, Georgia. Not much inside running this time. But Jackson is able to pick up a yard, maybe two. And they'll mark his progress at the 12-yard line. Appalachian leading the Southern Conference coming into the game today with a perfect 3-0 league mark, 5-1 overall. And Georgia Southern at 3-1, just a half a game back. But as we've talked about, the Eagles can ill afford a second defeat. They've already lost to Walford here, a stunning defeat, 14-7 back in September. They lost to Delaware in the season opener in Newark. Burchett rolling, pumping, incomplete. The intended receiver, Sterling Hayward, who's wearing an unusual number today at number 12, and rather than his accustomed at number six, it seems that number six uh, was not uh, in the trunk when they opened it up this morning, <laughs> so he's wearing number 12 today. And also, you know, look at the red zone, the Eagles defense, their first five opponents inside the 20-yard line. They've only had a 58% success for rate. And when you look right now, they're inside the 20, that being App State. Let's see what they can do inside the red zone. Burchett trying to engineer Appalachian to another first down. It would be their third of this drive, converting third downs. Joe cranks, and it's incomplete off the pads of Devon Folks. And it will be fourth down. And it will be Mark Wright coming in to try a field goal. The Pacheco could have really looked to the inside. He had 89 Jason LeMay wide open, but he was looking outside the folks on a pass play that they converted earlier. A 29-yard field goal attempt for Mark Wright. He is 5 of 9 in kicking field goals this year. 29-yard kick is on its way. And it is good. So Appalachian answers. The opening kickoff for touchdown with a right field goal, 7-3. Georgia Southern in the first in Statesboro. South Georgia today, but they tell us the uh, rain factor is very low. Excellent conditions for a ball game. Just the first time Appalachian's been on the natural grass all season long. They play practice on turf, play on turf, and so a little new experience uh, for this season for the Mountaineers. Wright just added that field goal to make it 7-2-3. And let's see what Ant Williams can do this time. Williams comes to the near side to take it at his three. Cuts it back 10. Penalty flag and a face mask. And that will give Georgia Southern some additional yards as Ant got it out to the 20. 
for Georgia Southern, what a luxury. Their quarterback, Chaz Williams, is about to take the field with the lead. And we talked to Ethan earlier about how this is the biggest game of his career as Georgia Southern's in a must-win situation. Chaz has a 7-3 advantage as he gets set to take his first snap from Charles Clark, the veteran all-conference performer, making his 36th straight start at center today for Georgia Southern. The Eagles don't throw it very often, but Owens and Kearney are sure-handed. But, of course, they rely on the triple option, and it is a fullback and slotback oriented attack where the quarterback makes those initial reads. And You've got to be good. You've got to hang on to the football. That's been a bit of a problem for Georgia Southern. They've coughed it up 22 times this year, although they've lost only eight. Well, they run gassers. <laughs> you know, if you cough it up, you run gassers in practice. You do up downs in practice. So anytime you have that type of punishment, it makes you think twice. So Williams sets it down. They bring a man in motion. And on the counter, Williams will keep it. And he gains four. Williams, we mentioned earlier, is the leading rusher in the Southern Conference. He averages 5.4 yards per carry, nine rushing touchdowns. He's the leading scorer in the Southern Conference. He's everything to this football team. As you stated, J.R. Revere last season, just an outstanding quarterback for the past few years, and now this young sophomore hasn't seen an awful lot, so I think John Wiley is going to try to confuse him. And there's a fumble. And Appalachian has recovered. The Mountaineers have the football. And that was nothing more than a mishandle by the quarterback. Well, you just touched on the 22 fumbles. They recovered eight. Anytime you have a young quarterback running the option, he's got to be aware of where the fullback is, when to tuck the ball into his stomach, bring it back, and move down the line. This time, I think Williams just left it in there a little too long, and he wanted to bring it back out, but he couldn't. And that, that's the type of players that kills any offense and I think that's what hurt them early in the season. So Josh Jeffries with the fumble recovery and Appalachian has it at the Georgia Southern 28. Inside. Or maybe a yard. It will be second down as the Mountaineers get a big break as they look to take the lead here, trailing 7-3. And that's why that first drive is so important, just to answer the bell with the first touchdown, which came very early. Now they have a chance, as you mentioned, Bob, to take the lead. Hoover is the fullback, Beard the tailback, behind quarterback Joe Perchette on second and eight. Jerry the carry. Breaks a couple of tackles and takes it to the 18 first down. Just hard running by Jerry Beard. And the Eagles coaches were concerned about Jerry Beard because they said first he makes the first guy miss. He's a good receiver out of the backfield, a good blocker. I mean, he just runs hard, but he runs low to the ground. I mean, he doesn't give you an awful lot to shoot at. He covers the ball, he twists, he turns. I mean, that's why he's so productive as a back because he doesn't just give you a chance to take shots at his body. Four touchdowns, he's averaging over 4.8, really five point yards, five yards per carry. So you look at Jerry Beard, good statistics. If he has a huge day today, he'll go over 2,000 career yards for Appalachian. Leighton is the motion man. Beard to the outside, Beard to the 10. Beard out of bounds at the seven. Boy, Jerry has returned to Georgia and is <laughs> running free and easy. Ron Bess, he likes what he sees at a 34 right now. Power football, wear down the defense. Because this isn't a very large defense. If you can go out there and rush the football and wear them down, you have a very good chance of winning. There's another famous Georgian from Lincolnton. He played his football in Athens at the University of Georgia. And we're speaking, of course, of the great Garrison Hurst. He's the cousin of Jerry Beard. And Jerry running a great today as Garrison did for his days in Athens and of course on to the National Football League for Garrison Hurst with the San Francisco 49ers. Jerry looking for a hole that closes quickly. And a yard gain, second and goal at the six. This offense, Bob, they've run a lot of running plays to the left behind. Our big cheerleader, I guess you'll say, last week 
Jim Vasquez also. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Well, he was, and I don't blame him. I mean, I would have been out there cheering my defense on, too, looking at how that game turned out. Jim Vasquez last week, the offense was on the sideline as the defense did all the scoring, and he's telling yeah, go, guys, go <laughs> get them. You're doing great. <laughs> Easy for him to say. But he's playing well today. Beard goes in motion. Hand off to Hoover. He's got a touchdown. The Mountaineers take it in, and they cash in on the fumble. The Mountaineers take the lead at 9-7 as Joey Hoover scores his third rushing touchdown of the year. A rare carry by Hoover, but he can thank Jerry Beard for that touchdown because the defense went with 34. And I'll tell you this, Ethan, Georgia Southern is backing up defensively. Appalachian is controlling that line of scrimmage, and they are moving the football right in to kick the PAT. 10-7, Appalachian with 440 remaining in the opening quarter in Statesboro. Unbeaten in the Southern Conference, Appalachian has recovered from an opening kickoff TD for GSU. Series against the Mountaineers. They've got their work cut out for them today. Appalachian has come out of the gates great, and sometimes, Ethan, a club returns an opening kickoff for a touchdown. That can uh, swing the pendulum in that team's favor, but not so. Appalachian has come back, and they have moved the ball it seemed extremely well. And did he stop? Yes, it's going to be a touchback. He didn't come out of the end zone. It was close, and to add to that, Bob, they came back with the turnover deep into their own territory and gave Appalachian a chance to come out and do something positive. Here's a look at the Appalachian D. Josh Jeffries, their great defensive end, along with KT Stovall, Moore, and Manino, outstanding as well. The linebacker, the man in the middle, Stuart Adams, a redshirt freshman, inserted for his speed at that spot against the option. And it's always pressure. The corners have single coverage. Lyles and Black, Rogers and Cornatzer are going to be expected to help on the run. And this time it goes to the fullback. And no running room at all for Jermaine Austin. Look at Jeffries leading the cheers. Hey, he's my Batman. <laughs> but I tell you what, number 40, Stuart West delivered the blow. If they put him inside to make those type of plays, he stood up big time to the big fullback. Second and ten. Walden tries to get to the outside, and he's knocked off his feet. Z. Walden could not turn the corner. There's what we're talking about, that run support. Cornatzer got to the spot quickly. He got there quickly because Batman Jeffries, he stayed home. He forced him to the outside, and that's what defensive coordinator John Wally wants to do. Force the slot backs to the outside, pursue the football, and he is going to see a bam right there. Good tackle by Cornatzer. You've got to string this thing out left to right. Yes. You can't let them go north-south. They're too fast for that. Myers in motion. Williams wants to throw, and he's going to go deep down the sideline. An uncatchable ball, incomplete at the 45. As Derek Owens, number five, was the intended receiver. And Derek Black had him well covered. That's one of those plays, Bob, where you just try to keep them honest. Because this team doesn't want to throw the football. Scott Shelton getting set to punt. And Devon Folks will be the deep man for the Mountaineers. Pressure. Just got it away. Folks will take it at the 48. Breaks one tackle and ends up losing yardage back to the 42. This fall will get your NFL fix a day earlier with the most outrageous, unpredictable NFL pregame show you've ever seen. Introducing the NFL show on Fox Sports Net with Michael Irvin, Tony Siragusa, and comedian Tommy Davidson. So start your NFL weekend the night before the kickoff with the NFL show. Presented by the U.S. Postal Service tonight after Texas and Kansas State and tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time only on Fox Sports Net. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, Paul Crane with you from Statesboro after a 30-yard punt. 
and a minus six on the return. The Mountaineers have the lead and the ball and approach midfield on the run by Jerry Beer. Let's check in with Paul Crane. Bob, no surprise to see the Mountaineers going back on the ground when after that touchdown series, when they came off the field, heavy praise for the offensive line down here. Coaches telling them to keep it up. One coach yelling, I guarantee you it's going to come down to the guys up front. Right now, it's the difference in the game for Appalachian State. The big guys up front doing the... They have dominated, Paul, and, and Ethan wa watching from up top of the press box, that line surge. It's a palpable thing. They have been knocking Georgia Southern off the ball this entire opening quarter. Project to Beard, and Beard going down into Georgia Southern territory at the 48-yard line. And that line surge has a cumulative effect too that's a helpless feeling in football when the guy lined up yeah. opposite you you can't stop it well if you're an offensive lineman you love it because now it's just get into a three-point stance come off the ball you don't have to worry about pass blocking and it's the guy really that dominates the line of scrimmage or really in this case the side that dominates the line of scrimmage bob that's the side that wins you got to rush the football and stop the rush and right now you look at the eagles of georgia southern they're not stopping the rush very well and it's not an overly big line you're looking at uh, 70 McIntyre he weighs 257 Rio 238 Hardison 218 Cabral 253 so it's not an overly large defensive front here's Burchett giving it to Jackson and he's tripped up as he gets to the 46 and going back to the line play for a second Bob not only are they coming off the ball they're staying on their blocks I mean these guys of the Eagles they're having a hard time getting rid of the white jerseys watch they're just covering up everyone, staying in front of them. Now, Jackson doesn't have a huge hole, but he has enough of a hole just to fall forward. Now, if that had been Jerry Beard, he makes a hole. The total yardage in this opening quarter, Appalachian 107, Georgia State 5. Of course, the Eagles were able to score on that kickoff return. This one thrown well beyond the reach of Jermaine Little and passed double coverage for the Eagles. Boy, Burchett getting to his feet. He got waylaid after he released the football. Also third and nine. I want to say this, Bob, 26, Aaron Whitaker. He stays home. I mean, Burchett takes a shot right there from Eric McIntyre, but little was hell. I thought about Whitaker, number 26. Burchett's converted two out of three on third downs. Third and nine here for Joe and the Mountaineers. For Jeff, lost to pass. He's looking near sideline, and it is complete for the first down. The grab made by Sterling Hayward. Coming back to get the football. The junior from Somerville, South Carolina, makes his first catch. Sterling was their top receiver a year ago. And that's why Joe Percet is very happy to have Sterling Hayward back in this offense because these two guys work magic together. Great route, and I think this is a nice pass because he's on the opposite hash. He throws across the field, and normally that doesn't happen. That's just nice arm strength. Hayward coming back after off-season shoulder surgery. Missed the first two games this year. You're right, Ethan. They are happy to have him back at Boone. Here's Joey Hoover, and Joey takes it to the 29-yard oh, line. A penalty flag comes flying. And we'll see what happened on this play. Well, they're being aggressive in the secondary. In the App State receivers, they're going after the corners. Thirty-nine seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Illegal block below the waist. Receiver in motion, blocking back toward the ball on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay first down. Mark Curls is our referee today. So the football moved back to the 45. And you can just see the confidence of this offense. And they've hit some pass plays. Beard has given them something on the ground. And 
As I said, the receivers are attacking the corners. They're trying to soften those guys up so when Jerry Beard breaks out, you know, they'll be looking to see where that block is coming from. First and 22, they've got to get the chains set properly on the far side. They may have. Did they mark off too much yardage? Let's see. No, that's right. Should be at the 45. Now the chain man is set. And here we go. First and 22 for Joe for Jeff Napalachin. Four men crushing. Burchett throws sideline incomplete. Joe just threw that one away, getting some pretty big heat that time from Matt Rio, number 96. You can hold those blocks, but for so long. Well, that's what we've been looking for, that type of pressure. Because he wanted to throw that pass to the right. No one was open, but there was really no pressure, so he had time to come back to his left, and Rio applied a little pressure that time. And you can't give Joe Pachette a lot of time back there because he has some good receivers that can go out there and make plays. Appalachian has dominated this first quarter. The lone chink in the armor was the opening kickoff return for the touchdown. But in terms of the offense versus defense, it's been all Mountaineers. Final play of the quarter for Chet. Trying to watch it with the toss. Folks, down at the 43, and that will be the final play of the opening quarter. First place of the Southern Conference at stake. And we are off to a great start on our college football Saturday in Statesboro. Ann Williams took the opening kickoff 93 yards for a score. But Appalachian has come back. They took the lead on Joey Hoover's six-yard run. Ball after scoring a touchdown. Uh, no, I did not. That was different. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> There's a few DBs and linebackers, yeah. I think, would uh, like, to like to take that Sharpie and do something with it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, here's Chaz Williams on second down, looking to pitch. You oh, and a dangerous pitch. That's a loose ball. But Georgia Southern has recovered. Boy, this option for all of its greatness can be a very delicate thing, and you have got to make good tosses on these pitches. 36 right there, Sam Smalls makes this play. This is the option at its best. Quarterback turns Williams, he's down the line, but 36 stays home. I mean, he could have gone after the pitch with, would have left the quarterback wide open. He takes the quarterback, and here comes the linebacker. Stewart Adams, number 40. Third down. Williams to throw, and this one is complete. Walden. Inside the 15 at the 14. Georgia Southern needed a big play, and they got it. Walden sneaks out of the backfield, and he was wide open. Well, see, Walden just comes across on that post route, Bob. This is something we were talking about earlier. When you sneak up along the line of scrimmage and you watch for the option, the secondary must be aware of the receivers behind them. In this case, Z. Walden, he comes from the backside. He runs the post. He's wide open. And it was nice patience by Williams just allowing him a chance to clear the defenders before throwing the pass. 62-yard pass plug. Williams cuts it back to the 10. Now, you mentioned consistency confidence when you have those type of plays as a young team really this young quarterback it just builds and we've seen he's come back now same option play he doesn't go down the line of scrimmage he darts back to the inside because that's where it opened up georgia southern trailing 10-7 austin is the setback myers the left slot moving and Williams takes it to the five. Not enough for a first down. Georgia Southern can get a new set of downs without scoring. They must get the football to the four. 12.35, clock running, second quarter. Make note of that play because all Williams does is follow the fullback. He sticks the ball in the belly. He hopes the defense tackles the fullback, and now he comes right behind him for a big play. 
as he has looked a little shaky when he strings out that option. Is it enough for the first down? It appears so. It is. First and goal for Georgia Southern. And offensively, they haven't really done an awful lot. I mean, a big play through the air, but nothing has really been sustained on the ground. Williams into the end zone. Did they give it to him? Yes. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Jazz Williams takes it in. His 10th rushing touchdown of the year. And the Eagles take the lead at 13 to 10. Well, they came back with the same play because they want you to tackle the fullback, and then they're going to send that quarterback right behind him because they don't expect you to think he's coming in behind him. Really, the fullback is the blocker, but he just doesn't know it. The PAT is coming. Scott Shelton putting it up and in. And it's 14 to 10, so the Eagles bounce back. A big pass play from Williams to Walden for 62 yards. And then Williams takes it home, and the Eagles go back in front in this Seesaw Southern Conference matchup in Statesboro. A new quarterback, Chaz Williams for J.R. Revere. A new fullback, Jermaine Austin, the redshirt freshman. As they attempt to fill some very big shoes here at uh, Statesboro and Boston Stadium. A great Adrian Peterson, his number three, retired, of course, after he became the greatest running back in the history of 1AA football. Look at those numbers, 6,500 rushing yards, 84 touchdowns, and that's just regular season in consecutive 100-yard games. He had 49 all told and had this memorable run. On the return, it's Jermaine Little. Look out, inside the 10. Great coverage downfield. Kearney led the way. Carl Kearney, the wide receiver, in on special teams. Downfield quickly to make the play. Georgia Southern won 80 yards in seven plays. 62-yard pass to Z. Walden. The big play of the drive. Jazz Williams, three-yard touchdown run. And Georgia Southern has taken a 14-10 lead. Just under 12 minutes to play here in period number two. Boy, just when you think Appalachian had it going their way, Georgia Southern pops the big pass play. Burchett to Jerry Beard. Just put your helmet down and get three tough yards. <laughs> and the Eagles, they've come back with the score, but just like in the beginning of the game in the first quarter. They scored first, Appalachian answered, turnover, Appalachian answered. I don't think this will be a game where Appalachian panics. And they have too many seniors, they've been in this situation before. Be patient and take your time. And you know a guy like Burchett really wants this one. He's come down here twice to Statesboro and won in a playoff game, came up empty-handed. He would like nothing better than to end his career at Boone with a victory at Georgia Southern. Makes the toss throws behind his tight end at LeMay and incomplete or check it uh, an incompleted pass and for the Mountaineers number 80 Daniel Bettis was the intended receiver the freshman from Roswell well he's going to have to play better than that pass but also App State normally plays Georgia Southern tough I mean they'll give them a run for the money and then they'll have a breakdown late in the game or several breakdowns that really cost in the ball game so they really feel like Appalachian you know we can really play with this team we just haven't gotten it together for four quarters Joe works out of the shotgun this time high stack no problem swings it out to Hoover very shy the first down but Georgia Southern forces a three and a three and out and now the crowd is starting to get into the ball game. I mean, defensively, they needed a lift. They needed a stop because they really haven't stopped App State all afternoon. They really stopped themselves. So to get up the field and to give themselves good field position, that was a good defensive stand. 
Nate McKinney is the punter. And Williams ready to receive the punt. Back at his own 40-yard line. Fair catch called for, and it's going to sail out of bounds. And Georgia Southern will have it at their own 46 when we come back to Statesboro after this. Appalachian has had their fair share of big plays defensively this year, and it seems that Derek Black is right in the middle of all of them. When we were up in Boone in mid-September in a game against Eastern Kentucky, a loose ball, and Derek Black was Johnny on the spot. He returned at 48 yards and really turned that game around against the Colonels, and Appalachian came from behind in the second half to win that game. The very next week, they were on the road in Lynchburg, Virginia against Liberty, and Black comes up with the field goal, uh, the return off a block field goal, 50 yards for a touchdown. And Appalachian won a game late at Liberty. And of course, last week, this play has been replayed, oh, 5,000 times <laughs> since last Saturday. <laughs> On the toss from Jeffries, Black takes it to the house for a two-point defensive point after touchdown return. That was the winning points in Appalachian's incredible 16-15 win over Furman last week at Kid Brewer Stadium. We'll see what he can do. The junior from Tarboro as Georgia Southern takes over. Williams on the toss as Austin takes it out of bounds at the 44-yard line of Appalachian. Now that toss, the player's a little closer to him. He doesn't have the defensive pressure. Much cleaner play. But also offensively with the motion, it forced Appalachian to remove one of their defenders to the opposite side. So they now go back to that weak side option. That's why there was a lot of room over there because they were short a defender. Austin straight ahead to the 38. Down to the field, the lovely and talented Paul Crane. Oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> After that last series, when Chaz Williams scored the touchdown, head coach Mike Siwak came over, sat with his quarterback, thought he was doing things too quickly, told him, relax, play the game, make them react to you. You're the one in control. He certainly was on that last series. Williams has a four-point lead in his back pocket, working in Appalachian territory. On the option, gives it to Austin. Down the sideline he goes. Needs a block, gets it, stumbled, and didn't get it into the end zone. Jermaine Austin looking for six indeed, but he didn't get it. Watch this, Bob. There's a guard pulling, fullback in space and both KT Stovall and Sam Smalls go for the quarterback no one there for the pitch and when you're playing option football you play responsibility you have to be very disciplined watch 93 he cuts gets off 36 should be on six but he goes for the quarterback you have to stay at home or you give up the big play and you certainly can't put two men on the quarterback into the end zone for the touchdown as Georgia Southern takes a 20 to 10 lead that Austin run to set up the score, 37 yards. As Williams gives Georgia Southern a 10-point advantage with the extra point coming up. Every instinct in football, if you're a defender, is to go to the ball. Yes. And you've got <laughs> to fight that. You've got to resist that natural urge to go after the ball when you play the triple option. Scott Shelton's BAT is good. 21 to 10. The Eagles in front. Hasn't this been a strange first half? It has. They've gone up and down the field, but going back to your last statement, Bob, if Sam Smalls stays home, takes the back, I don't think the play gains any yards because KT Stovall, he has quarterback right there. He had the quarterback, but you mentioned it. Sam Smalls reacted to the ball. He left his man, pitch out there. Nobody's there. And that's what makes it tough because it goes against everything you've been taught as a defender. See, 93, he's there for the play. 36 reacts. Nice play by Williams. He does what he's supposed to do. And that's why you see a lot of green grass. The Eagles are now coming back to the weak side and forcing the defensive end and linebacker to make a decision. It's back to quarterback or quarterback to back. You make the decision, and we're trying to make a play. The two heroes, they're talking about it. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Bob, with these guys living together, the backs, the quarterbacks, they watch tape together. Can't you just see those guys high-fiving each other when they go home and watch the game tape saying, oh, we got them on that one, man. Look at this, look at that. I mean, that's how you learn. You learn together. Derek Black back on the kick return team. He didn't have a chance to make a big play in that series. As Georgia Southern goes 54 yards and only four plays, Austin carried it three times in the drive, but Williams got the touchdown. And now Scott Shelton kicks it off, and Derek Black will return it from his own two. And another great downfield play for the second straight kickoff by Carl Kearney. Excellent special teams coverage. Fredericks are calling the best damn sports show period a two hour frat party with irreverent skits, insightful interviews, and sharp locker room banter. The best damn sports show period every weeknight at 8 and 11, only on Fox Sports Nets. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, and Paul Crane with you from Statesboro. Second quarter, Eagles 21 and Appalachian 10 is first place in the Southern Conference is on the line. Georgia Southern is a team that has won the league five consecutive years and six overall. And Appalachian, with a win today, would go a long way in winning the title this year. Jerry Beard was hot early, trying to get it going. Takes it out to the 19. But if I'm Ron Bess, I come back with a rushing attack. Slow this team down. Prevent them from getting the football offensively. And now you play the clock because... Your big boys up there in white, they've done a fairly decent job so far in the first half of controlling the line of scrimmage. Go back to what's gotten you to this point, and you don't want to get blown out early. Jerry Beard has carried it 15 times this afternoon for Appalachian, and he has gained 83 yards. Lined up behind fullback Joey Hoover as Joe Burchett sets him down second and four. Beard gets it again. Drives it to the 20, and that's it. Third and about four for Appalachian. Georgia Southern has regrouped. Ethan, we talked about early in the game, that first quarter, Appalachian had the line surge. They were dominating the line of scrimmage. That has not happened here in the second quarter. No, it hasn't because the Eagles have come up with big plays on offense. They have points on the board. I think they regained the momentum because of that. And defensively now, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. Still showing a four-man front is Georgia Southern. They haven't changed the look. They're still putting 0-7-8 oh, in the box. Here's Burchett under heavy pressure. Down he goes. You would have to consider that one a coverage sack. They did leak the tight end LeMay downfield, but he was covered. And it's going to be three and out for the second straight time for the Mountaineers. No, it was a coverage sack. Also, the Eagles came with the blitz. They were in man coverage. Burchett just didn't have enough blockers for the defenders. Nate McKinney is the punter, and Williams the deep man. Burchett needs to boom one. Hant is going to play it on the bounce. But excellent field position once again for the Eagles. They'll have it at their own 46. 7.08 left. Second quarter in Statesboro, Georgia. 21-10 Eagles. Twenty-one ten, Georgia Southern here in the second. The Southern Sports Report, 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to home teams throughout the South. Comes your way nightly at 10 Eastern and 9 Central. Coming up tomorrow night at 10, we'll have the recap of the big Panthers-Falcons game at the Dome. Paul Crane has his sit down with Georgia coach Mark Richt and we'll have the NASCAR recap from Virginia keeping close tabs on the points rate. Speaking of Paul Crane, he's down on the sidelines and Paul, it's always a series of adjustments as you move through after a wild first quarter. What's Appalachian's defense thinking? Well, they're thinking the phrase of the moment is you guys have got to stay home. Defensive coordinator John Wiley telling his entire defense that message. This is assignment football. Defensive back Nigel Rogers getting an earful, as did defensive end KT Stovall. He was told it's the same old thing. You've got to stay outside and protect your gap. We'll see if they're able to do it. You could truly put that in the category of easier said than done. No doubt about it. And again, outstanding field position for the Eagles. 
Myers in motion. Williams nowhere to go. Menino jumps on his back. And one thing I can say, and look at this Eagle offense, they have gone now to a lot of different formations, trying to confuse John Wiley, trying to confuse his defense by moving a lot of offensive play, really the slot guys around, but they're still trying to run that option now from just different formations. I want to keep an eye on Stuart Adams, number 40, the middle linebacker. He was a late addition on the depth chart to the starting lineup this week, and I, he has done a pretty good job reading this defense. Here's the toss to the outside. It's complete to Derek Owens. Shy of the first down. It will be third and about one. Now, I was real surprised going back to Stuart Adams, surprised with him getting the start, because this is a type of offense where you have to be aware of the personnel. And in this case, here's a guy, Bob, that hasn't played an awful lot, and you're asking this young player to take on a huge responsibility, the fullback in this offense. Well, he wasn't getting much time. They moved him to fullback, then brought him back to the defensive side of the ball and gets a start today in, in uh, the game, yes, the game of the game. year uh, to date especially after what happened last week uh, in the Furman game, giving Appalachian uh, an unblemished conference record. This game has really turned around. Georgia Southern was outgained by about that margin in the first period and now rolling up the yards in the second quarter. But that's something that this triple option attack uh, can do. It is not unusual for this team to roll up 350, 400 yards rushing a game. Yeah, and really you look at the past three games over 447 yards on the ground. Third down and we'll call it one. 615 left in the period. And Williams will take it upon himself to get the Georgia Southern first down. And when you play a team like this as well, Bob, when you have so many options, as Chaz Williams does. Defensively, you are a step or two slow because you can't really react as responsibility football. And not being able to react, you have to come back and really start to think. You, you start to think too much, and you know that takes away from your natural instincts, which is to play football. Three receivers to the left. That includes the slot man, Myers. Walden in motion. Williams carries it. And knocked down at the 38. Scott Kornatzer, the senior from Advance, North Carolina, over to make the tackle. There's a lot of intriguing one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups as Appalachian looks to defend this option. One is uh, Jeffries, 58, the great end for Appalachian, against a guy who's an all-conference performer at left tackle for Georgia Southern, James McCoy, number 61. These guys have been going at it for three years. Both seniors, great players. They've had great battles. As now to the outside goes Austin. Linesman goes down. Austin gets the first down, and Georgia Southern has it. First and 10 at the 26. This pitch is outstanding. If you watch this pitch, he just pitches it down the line. I mean, look how close Stovall was to the ball. All he had to do was reach his big arm out there, bat it down, it's a fumble. I mean, Chaz Williams now, with the big plays in the first part of the game, he's starting to play with confidence. Austin has carried it seven times for 67 yards. Williams to the 24, Brad West with the tackle. And Jermaine Williams to be a freshman. I mean, we've said a lot about Chaz Williams, excuse me, Jermaine Austin. And they, you look at how they score in the first half, 141 points to 33. So this is an offense that scores a lot, but going back to Austin real quickly, I mean, here's a guy that's been player of the week twice as a freshman, so you know he has some type of ability. Austin breaks a tackle, takes it to the 20. Jermaine moved into the starting lineup because of his effort in the Delaware game. The opener in Newark back in late August. And he's maintained that position, but uh, he's not the biggest of the running backs they've ever had here. Jermaine, 5'7", 200 pounds. But he's replacing a legend, Adrian he Peterson. So there's a lot of pressure on him to go out there and perform well because he will get a lot of touches. Third down and three. Walden, the motion man. And Williams, nothing doing on this one. 
and there is just what Paul was talking about, staying at home. Number 90, Leon Moore. I mean, that time the Eagles went to the well once too often. They've run that same play, stick the ball in the belly of the fullback, quarterback follow, third and short. Also, Williams has run it for a touchdown. This time, Leon Moore said, no dice, I am stopping the play. 36-yard field goal attempt by Scott Shelton coming up. Nearly blocked as the distance and nails it. 24 to 10, Eagles. Georgia Southern has scored on each of its three possessions here in the second quarter. Well, Bob, this is a team I think they play on momentum. I mean, early on, they took it down the field. App State, they answered the field goal, turnover. App State scores again. Now they've come back with big players of their own. And I think when you play that type of football, it can be sort of hairy, sort of scary, because if your team isn't making plays, you now have to make those plays. And I, I look at the other sideline, App State, this is a team that they've had a lot of come from behind wins, and they find themselves in the same position once again. I think, by when you look at their offense, now, I think you mentioned earlier, this is a must drive for them to get points on the board because I don't think they can fall way behind this offense because they're too powerful. The field goal by Scott Shelton is his season long 36 yards to make it a 24 to 10 game. 312 remaining here in the second quarter. Derek Black hasn't had a big play yet, but the day is young. He has a way of making them <laughs> when they need him the most. And he is back on the kick return as Scott Shelton gets set to boot it away for Georgia Southern. 24-10 Eagles. Georgia Southern in a must-win situation today to keep their hopes alive for a sixth consecutive Southern Conference Championship. Mr. Black at the 20. Penalty flag. I'd like to remind you that coming up at halftime, Mr. Paul Crane will take you through the festivities. And this Southern Conference is one of the most historic in all of college sports. We'll take a look at the history of this league, which is rich. Join the college football Saturday team, Chris Rose, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino in our Los Angeles studio. They'll preview the Texas K-State game tonight. We'll look back at last week's wild finish up at Appalachian and comments from both coaches. During the return, block in the back, on the receiving team, penalties 10 yards or half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, that will make it a little tougher as Appalachian has it now first and 10 at their own 13. Appalachian has not had field position. They have been unable to get a first down this quarter. They've averaged just over three yards on first down today. Georgia Southern is averaging over seven yards on first down. Burchett from his own end zone down the sideline. It is complete. Nice grab by Andrew Layton, and he was wide open. Out of bounds at the 25, first and 10, Appalachian. Well, Burchett's going to have to have that type of effort because they've now backed themselves into a hole. They're deep into their own territory. They need points on the board. That's a 17-yard gain. Two receivers way at the bottom. Back out of your picture for Appalachian as Burchett works out of the gun. Steps up. He'll have to run it. And gets to the 29. And a penalty flag. They may get McIntyre for a late hit, number 70. That was a late hit. McIntyre's got his arms out like, what did I do? But <laughs> he was on the ground. <laughs> Personal foul against the defense. I mean, I don't think Burchett really wants to run this football anyway. Because he's on the ground spearing. Remember, this is the quarterback, Joe Burchett. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. This is the quarterback who had back surgery and missed the first two games and still plays with that flak jacket. And McIntyre put that helmet right into his back and drew the penalty. That moves the football out to the 45. Burchett, 6 of 11 for 62 yards in the air. And again, works out of the gun. 
Goes complete to Hayward. And he's taken down in Georgia Southern Territory at the 48. And this is what they need before the half. We still said a lot of things about the quarterbacks today. We talked about Chaz Williams taking blows. Burchett, he's taking a lot of blows also back there standing in the pocket. Two thirteen and counting, second quarter. Burchett looking. And out of bounds. Incomplete pass. I guess the coaches saw that too. They sprinted Joe out to the right. To try to evade some of that pressure. Actually, I thought Brandon Turner was in bounds. We'll get another look at it. Ooh, I don't know. The only question was. When he received the ball, was his back foot on the out-of-bounds line? Good point. The eagle eye of Ethan Horton. <laughs> <laughs> Third down. Burchett. Batted down. Victor Cabral was the man who batted the pass down. Fourth down. Mark Wright comes on. And Williams goes deep. And with two minutes to go before halftime, Georgia Southern will get the football back. Here is Nate McKinney with the punt. High hanger, Williams will make the fair catch at the 11. Well, Appalachian got a little momentum. They were backed up inside their own 15. A couple of big plays, but no points. Defensively, the Eagles have picked it up. Their front four, they've become very active. They've changed their coverage in the secondary, but now they've gone to a lot of man coverage, mixing in a little zone, and they're really not giving Burchett a lot of time back there to survey the secondary and complete passes. Well, you wonder, too, without uh, Fuscata, that first quarter may have caught them off guard a little bit, but they have kind of gotten their sea legs, if you will, and really stiffened defensively. Now Williams leads that option. He's out there by his lonesome this time and gets it back for a five-yard gain. This game has been a microcosm of the Georgia Southern season. They started out slowly, losing two of their first three, one to Delaware on the road, and that's a night they dedicated the stadium to Tubby Raymond, so you figure Delaware is going to be up in the air for that one. But then a home loss to Wofford caught everybody by surprise. But you see what they've done over the last three. And now Mike Seawalk's team, which trailed in the first quarter, they have come back to take the lead at 24-10. And... Get a first down here over the 20 yard line out to the 23 is Jermaine Austin picks up another first down. Well, the reason they started out slowly, Bob, is one, turnovers, two, a young quarterback that really didn't understand the philosophy of this offense. Make plays, and I think three, it's been Adrian Peterson's team, J.R. Revere's team for so long. Now you have young guys, they didn't understand their roles. Williams. Jeffries just denies that play. That's what we talk about when you string out the play laterally. Well, he stayed home. He forced the quarterback to make a decision that he did not want. Chaz Williams wanted to turn up. He couldn't because Jeffries stayed between he and the ball carrier. He couldn't pitch it because Jeffries stayed right, like I said, between he and the ball carrier. See, he makes him make a decision. If he pitches it, Jeffries is there. Batman, he comes up with the big play on defense. A timeout called by Appalachian and that is the first time out used by either team here in the first half Boy, Jeffries is a great one I really like the way he approaches the game defensively senior from Rougemont North Carolina his game last week against Furman he's the man who made the interception at the goal line on the two-point play and then lateral to Derek Black this is the play that has been replayed so often because it, it uh, turned defeat into victory for Appalachian. But overshadowed with all of this activity, it was the fact that he had nine tackles.
three of them for losses, a sack, makes the big interception at the end of the game. For that, he was named the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week. And Appalachian rolled in here unbeaten in the league, but they're down 14 now with 48 seconds left before halftime. And you can see from that last play why this guy's a Buck Buchanan, I want to say favorite, because he's played well this entire season. He could have gone up to the quarterback, but he didn't. The only thing giving him problems is his mouth picks. Well, yeah. <laughs> Here's Williams. Running. Clock stops as they mark it. First down, Georgia Southern. And now this offense, I realize it's only 40 seconds left, and the Mountaineers will have to make some adjustments. But they have this defense on their heels because they haven't stopped the offense this quarter. They really haven't stopped the option, and they've hidden some pass plays through the air. 30 seconds to go. As Austin just keeps those little legs a-running. Over the 45, out to the 47. Well, I like what I see in Jermaine Austin. He's kind of got that Don Nottingham body, you know, the low center of gravity. He does, but look at the line of scrimmage. See, he's, what, eight yards up the field before anyone touches him? And we've talked about Appalachian's front wall of blockers. But now, when you have a little confidence and you have a defense thinking, catching opposed to reacting, it's much easier to sustain that block, and that's what they're doing along the front. You know, I know Don Nottingham was a little bit before your time, but Paul Crane, you remember Don Nottingham. Help, help me out. <laughs> Wasn't he a bowling ball kind of guy? <laughs> there yes. you go. Exactly. You know, that's okay, Ethan. That's all right. Hey, you're just a young fellow. Well, Understand. thank you. That's all right. Thank you. And don't worry about that, Bob. The what? age thing, it's just a birth defect. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 24 so you, seconds left before halftime. You two are ganging up on me, right? No, no, not That's at all. That's all right. I, we just, still have another half. <laughs> just trying to teach you some of the history of our great game. That's all. <laughs> hey, I can live with that. <laughs> Speaking of Paul Crane, he'll be center stage when halftime comes up in just a few seconds. And some interesting features coming your way. You won't want to... Miss those as Williams flares it to the near side and complete as Owens goes out of bounds to stop the clock with 18 seconds. Here is our halftime lineup. We'll go back. Speaking of the history of our great game, the history of the Southern Conference will be profiled. We'll check out a preview of tonight's Texas Kansas State game. K State's won eight straight at home, and Texas, see what they can do. And the rebound mode after last week's defeat against Oklahoma. And we'll look once again at last week's wild finish. Folks still buzzing about that game in the press box today and all around college football. The penalty flag as Austin puts his head down and gets it to the 38. Penalty flag back at the 50. Procedure call coming against the Eagles. This is a pretty big defensive stand here for Appalachian. They cannot afford to give up any more points right now. Down 14 on the road. Bob, you're right, they can't. But also, you look at Mitch Ware, the offensive coordinator. I mean, he has gotten... Illegal formation on the offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. He has gotten Jermaine Austin the football in a variety of ways. Up middle to the right, to the left. Option right, option left. I mean, right now, App State defensively, they have no answer for Jermaine Austin. He has put together 10 carries for 91 yards in this first half. The number two leading rusher. Well, they're not going to run another play. Clock expires, and the first half is history. Georgia Southern took the opening kickoff and scored. Then Appalachian battled back to take the lead. But since it was 10-7 Mountaineers, it's been all Georgia Southern. I've got coach. Let's go down to the field where Paul Crane is standing by with the head man at Appalachian. Paul. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Head coach Jerry Moore. The triple option always so tough to defend. How tough is it for your guys today? 
Well, they had a couple of big plays, but I think the big thing for us has just been field position. We've not been able to get the kickoffs back uh, anywhere de decent, and uh, just uh, just stifles our, stifles our offense. That, that's the one thing that's hurt us. But the, as far as playing the option, they've had two big plays on the option, and, and uh, just got it. We didn't get anybody out in the alley. Well, your offense was able to answer that opening kick return for a touchdown with a couple of good drives, then got stymied a bit. How many adjustments need to be made there at halftime? Well, I think, again, I think field position was a lot of it. We didn't want to give them the ball back at midfield, and we ended up giving them boom, right on at about the 40 or so and gave them great field position. And then for them, uh, you know, you, you get them down around the 30-yard line you know, or 20, 40 yard line, you're in four down zone. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. The third quarter about to begin in Statesboro, 24-10, Georgia Southern. Eagles kick it off. End over end, and Devon Folks at the three. To the outside, 20. Nice return to the 28-yard line, and that's where Appalachian will set up. Not the greatest field position, but better than, they, than that they've had to, over the course of that second quarter, that's for sure. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. Georgia Southern's outscoring Appalachian 17-0 in that second quarter. After yielding 10 points in the first quarter, the most that Georgia Southern has allowed in a first quarter all season long. But as Jerry Moore was talking about, his ball club has got to dig itself out of some of these big field position holes and try to get something going. They're down by 14 on the road, but living on the edge has been a way of life. For this Mountaineer team all season, Gary Beard, who had a huge first half with the first carry of this third quarter. Beard toted the football 16 times for 83 yards in the first half. Well, he's had a very good first half, Bob. I think when you look at Joe Perchette, he's going to have to bring more to the party. I mean, they're going to have to take some shots down the field. He's going to have to hit some big plays because when you look at this game, although the Eagles have run the ball very well, it's still even, but they've won the big plays battle. Second and nine. Here's Burchett's passing numbers. Joe with the play action. Zips it and completes it. Out to Andrew Layton. He'll get the first down at the 42. Andrew Layton, senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Second team all-conference performer one year ago. See, this is what I'm talking about. Spread the field, hit some plays, and force the Eagles to play defense. Respect your offense. I mean, you've already established something with Jerry Beard. Now, loosen that secondary up to hit some big plays, and Lathan, on that time, he was able to do that. Sterling Hayward is back in. And this is what Mike Sewak was talking about with Paul Crane at halftime. The comeback kids. Appalachian has trailed in four of their five wins this year in the second half. Inside handoff to Hoover, and the fullback picks up three to the 45. Now, you don't want to wait until seven seconds to go and you're down one and you need to pick off a two-point conversion pass to win. No, you, you know, don't. That's really pushing it to the <laughs> edge. But down 14, Jerry Moore's club has been there before this year. The only game that's gotten away from him was the Marshall game, that opening game against a 1A opponent in Huntington, West Virginia. Here's Burchett. Again, faking to Beard. Steps up in the pocket and throws complete to Beard. He tumbles his way to the 48. See, if he throws a softer pass, Beard catches it, and he's down the sideline, possibly. But he guns it. Beard, he's off balance. He makes an outstanding play just to hang on to it. It is a first down at the Georgia Southern 48. And going back to what you just said briefly, Bob, when you have those nail biters, that's not good for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> or your fingernail. <laughs> First and ten. Here's Burchett. Batted down. I believe it was Cabral, number 90, maybe 98 Hadley. Let's see. Adley's getting the congratulations. Eric, the 6'1 sophomore from Thomasville. See, Vasquez has him. Nice play by a defender. 
and the defenders are taught if you can't get there, see the quarterback, put your hands up, and you do what he just did. You bat the ball down. Second and ten. And again, we talked earlier today about yardage on first down, and Appalachian has not had many big first down plays in this game. The handoff goes to Jackson, and he will get just a yard, maybe, to the 46. A white, rather, the ball carrier, Jose White, the senior. And many people think that third down is the most important down. But I feel like first down is the most important down because it keeps you in second and short, third and short, and it puts you a lot closer to the first down marker. The Georgia Southern faithful. And boy, they've got faithful fans here in Statesboro. Up and on their feet, cheering for the defense on third and eight. Burchett works out of the gun. He's looking, throwing, and it is incomplete. Hayward and a penalty flag. That's going to be pass interference on Georgia Southern. A.K. Keys was defending, but he got there just a beat too soon. This is the young man who transferred here from Oregon. The speedster on the right corner, but makes the big mistake here, and that's going to give Appalachian a first and ten. Big play for the offense, because I don't know if this ball would have been completed anyway. Pass interference on the defense. Penalty is a spot foul. Automatic first down. He bumped them. They were they were there. It was a collision, but I, I think that Keys would have gotten the ball out just with his timing. So a third and eight, maybe a fourth and eight, and a punt turns into a first and ten. Now let's see if Appalachia can take advantage of the break. The fake to Jackson. Burchett throwing, and it is complete. Folks thrown out of bounds at the 18. Well, this is what you talked about, Ethan. You felt like Appalachian had to open up its offense. We're seeing that in this drive. Well, Jerry Beard, he's been successful. Shane Jackson, very successful. Play action. Fool the linebackers. Fool the secondary. There's Yvonne Folks. See, watch the linebackers right there. See, they have to honor that fake and it allows folks a chance to get behind him, and that's why he's so wide open. Young ran him out of bounds. It's first and ten for the Mountaineers. At the Georgia Southern 18. Burchett looks like a busted play. Gang tackled at the 22. Joe went one way, his backs went the other. Matt Rio the tackle. Well, the coaching staff there yelling at Sean Jackson. They're trying to point out to him what was supposed to happen. And it appeared it's going to be that little quick pitch back to the right, fakes the ball to the fullback left. 24 comes to the right for the quick pitch, but he goes to the fullback. A loss of two, second and 12. Make it second and 13 at the 20. Eight plays, 52 yards to open the third quarter for Appalachian. Burchett looks, throws it, four pass. Sterling Hayward, and now a penalty flag. Georgia Southern, head coach Mike Seawalk in disbelief. Well, the flag is actually on 56, Joe Scott. Because the Mountaineers had a one-on-one -on -one route with the back of the linebacker. In this case, White versus Scott and 56 held him. So another penalty. And again, Georgia Southern had him backed up second and 12. Holding on the defense, an eligible receiver during a legal forward pass play. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. We're also going to check on... 51, James Perchett on the right side of your screen. It was 51, check that instead of 56. Just Scott would probably be mad at me. But I'll make that correction. Like, Mom, that wasn't me. <laughs> that was somebody else. They made a mistake. Man, that guy on TV. <laughs> First and 10, Mountaineers at the 10. Fake on the toss for Chet. 
Trying to hit his tight end, Jason LeMay. Not close, but Burchett was pressured. Victor Cabral got right in his grill. Well, Cabral was in his grill, but slow developing play. If you're going to run that boot fake, the tight end must jam down, get out there, and give him somebody to throw to. I mean, there was no target. And it's not like Burchett is a very fast football player. Now, for those in our audience who don't know exactly what jam down means for the tight end, explain what that means. Step down into the defender, deliver a blow, make him think you're blocking him, let him come free, and now you're open into the flat. Second and ten. Beard hit immediately. Jumping on his back was Eric Hadley, number 98. Forty-five, Deshaun Jude is just unblocked. I mean, Beard had no chance. Somebody made a mistake there. Because he shouldn't have come in untouched. Oh, Jude's a big kid, too. Sophomore, 6'1", 250. By the looks at the sticks, Appalachian can get a first down without scoring, but it's got to get to about the half-yard line. It's third and ten from the ten. Burchett looking to the end zone, off the hands of Fultz, incomplete. A bullet pass, fourth down, field goal try. Aaron Whitaker, 26, had good coverage on Fultz on a crossing route. I think if Burchett had led him just a little bit, he could have gotten into the end zone. A 27-yard field goal attempt by Mark Wright. Right at a 29-yarder in the first quarter. This one is up, and this one is good. Mark Wright gives Appalachian three points it desperately needed to cut this Eagle lead to 11, and a timeout at Statesboro. Yes. Back to Statesboro, Georgia, where football returned 20 years ago, and quite a tradition has been created in a hurry. The legendary Georgia defensive coordinator, Irk Russell, took the program from its beginning, ending for him in 1989 with a 15-0 season and national championship. Eagles joined the Southern Conference in 91, have dominated ever since six conference championships, including the last five in a row, back-to-back -back championships in 1999 and 2000 national championships. And here at Paulson Stadium, the chant is, it's our house. Well, you know what? They're right. Since the stadium opened in 1984, Georgia Southern is 121 and 13 at home. But in the last four, just two and two. And Mike Seawalk told me just before the start of the second half, 14 would not be enough against these guys. And now that's been whittled down to 11, Bob. Well, thank you, Paul. And you know, Appalachian is one of the few teams that has come in here as a Southern Conference member and won. What a dynasty indeed. That's, I think, why everyone was shocked when Wofford came in here in September and won. Because you just don't win no. in their house. And that win gives everybody hope. That's about all you have, hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, Appalachian's down 11, as Paul pointed out. Let's see if they can slow up this triple option. This one is going to be returned up to the 40-yard line. A.J. Bryant was the up man who brings it out. And again, Georgia Southern has fantastic field position. Well, I don't understand that play because you got to pin this team deep in their own territory. I mean, look at, look at the running game here. A lot of speed. Austin, he comes back up the middle. I mean, we'll see right now if the Mountaineers, if they've made adjustments to the triple threat. Because this kid has gotten the ball in a variety of ways, and he has done something with it. Austin has carried it 10 times today for 91 yards. Williams 14 times for 47. And this is Austin getting the first carry of the second half. To the 43, a gain of three, second and seven. This is the number one rushing offense in 1AA football at over 407 yards per game. Georgia Southern averages 35 and a half points per game, and they pick up over six yards per carry. Again, they go inside to Austin. 
to the 48. John Benito with the tackle for Appalachian. You don't see the triple option used that often anymore in college football. It was all the rage, Joe, 20 years ago, Nebraska, Oklahoma, you name it. Just a few left. Georgia Southern Air Force uh, is a wonderful triple option team. If they make it work here in Statesboro, no one's figured it out. Myers tried to escape the end, cuts the corner, and he's out of bounds. A.T. Stovall was the man who had him in his sights. But Myers shifted gears and got out of his way. This is just all speed. Stovall plays it exactly right. See, he's there. He stutter steps, and now he's gone. And Myers just used that 4 three, seven speed to turn the corner. KT dropped his transmission there. Yeah. <laughs> he choked it down just a little bit. <laughs> First and ten. Williams. And good pursuit by West, the linebacker. Manito and Jeffries there as well. See, this is the type of offense that you have to make them drive the field and you force them to make mistakes. I mean, we've seen Williams the past few weeks when you look at the turnovers, we stated earlier, 22 fumbles. They've already had one today. I mean, this is a young kid still learning, so you want to force him to make decisions. Second and eight. Toss to Myers. Does he have the first down? No. Out of bounds at the 35. He's going to set up third and one for Georgia Southern. Mark Myers, senior. We talked about his good speed. We saw it against Stovall a second ago. He's the fastest guy on the team. His, and it runs in the family. His dad was a track man. Out of Potter Springs, Georgia, Mark Myers. The coaches felt like here's a guy that has a lot of big playability, but he hasn't shown it. He hasn't gone for a huge game, but he's picked up a lot of good yards here with his past two runs. They'll call it third and two. Jazz is hit, but he does not go down. Jeffries can't get him. Williams looking for the first down and taking out of bounds and a penalty flag. Boy, great job by Chaz Williams to stay alive. Jeffries had him not once but twice, and both times Williams eludes him. And we haven't seen that very often. I mean, normally when 58 gets his hands on someone, they go down. I mean, that's just the strength of Williams being able to break tackles. Let's see what this penalty is all about. Block in the back on Georgia Southern and a clip. Georgia Southern will go from third and short to third and long, and they've been pretty successful in the air. I'm anxious to see what they'll come back with. There are two fouls on the play. Blocking the back on the offense. Penalty has declined. Personal foul. Clipping on the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. So the football moves it back to the 50. Interesting decision there because if you decline the clip, it's fourth down. They did not make the first down. I would have moved them back because of the successfulness of this offense on the ground. Forced them to throw the football because I don't think that's something that they want to do. Third and long is not uh, one of their fortes. Williams can't uh, run the football as Stovall reaches back to make the grab. Georgia Southern has not converted a third down of more than 10 yards all season. And they don't do it here. Well, they prefer to keep that football on the ground and in Chaz Williams' hands and allow him a chance to make a big play or pitch it to one of his fast slot backs. Scott Shelton to punt. Devon Folks the deep man on his own 10. Fair catch. And 
and this one into the end zone. You can't bat it back like you can in the NFL. And it will be first and 10 at the 20 for the Mountaineers when we come back. Where Georgia Southern leads Appalachian State. Earlier this week, the man credited with the football foundation at Appalachian State. Jim Brakefield died in Louisville, Kentucky, where he had just recently moved. Brakefield was a master of the wishbone. Among his disciples, Air Force coach Fisher DeBerry, who still uses Brakefield's wishbone today. Brakefield took Appalachian from NAIA into Division I. Brakefield was buried on Wednesday in Boone on what would have been eight days shy of his 84th birthday. Bob. A great man, Paul, and I had the chance to work with, with Jim when he was a head coach at Appalachian. My under college uh, undergraduate days at Catawba, Appalachian and Catawba were in the same conference at that time, and Jim Brickfield was the head coach. And what a great man he was. Here's Burchett airing it out. To whom? We're not sure, as Layton, that ball was over his head by 20 yards. Trying to figure out, was that a mix-up on the quarterback or receiver? Because the receiver was double covered and the ball was thrown <laughs> over his head. And I just noticed Burchett pointing at himself, so I guess he's saying that's my bad. And the numbers on Burchett, he must get a little better because if they can score here, Bob, put seven on the board, we'll have a different ball game. And the all important battle for field position is also hanging in the balance. You go three and out on this particular drive, and you're going to give the Eagles a football back around their 40 yard line. And They've proven what they can do with good field position. Here's a swing pass to Polk, or rather to uh, White, and he'll take it to the 28-yard line, shy of the first down. But we're seeing Burchett, with the exception of that pass two plays ago, we're seeing him mix it up more now with the short stuff. Kind of get the pressure off Beard and go to that short passing game. Well, they must because in the secondary, they're taking away those receivers deep. And they're allowing him the short passes and also up front, the front four of the Eagles, they're applying a lot of pressure. So they're banking on the pressure can get there before he can complete those passes underneath. They go to two tight ends with Turner wide to the right. Hoover and Beard in the backfield. Turner the motion man. And Beard is going to get it. And then he's going to get it from the defense. The two youngs, James and David, the safeties. I don't know if this play was supposed to go inside because the blocking was as if he was supposed to go inside. He bounces it. It's, it's hard to pick up a yard or two to the outside when it's just short yardage. I mean, nice play by the youngs. A loss of two, fourth down. Nate McKinney's punt. And Williams. Watches this one bounce to 20 and out of bounds. So Appalachian needed a big punt from Nate McKinney, and they just got it. Pinning Georgia Southern back inside their 20. We'll be back to Statesboro after this. Parades first and 10 from its own 16. Chaz Williams, the redshirt sophomore, in his first year at the helm, replacing the legendary J.R. Revere. And the toss comes to Walden. And the Z-Man takes it out to the 18. Nigel Rogers, 30, and he fills the hole. And that's the pursuit that John Wiley, the defensive coordinator, has been expecting all game, although they've been placed in a bind at times. But he needs four or five guys to the ball carriers. And the injured Mountaineer is Scott Kornatzer. And gingerly placing that right leg down on the turf as he's helped off the field. You know, it's it's difficult sometimes to get that ticket for a home game here at Georgia Southern, but when you can get it, you've got the best view in the house. Georgia power. That's right. <laughs> it's a power position. <laughs> That's the uh, Statesboro version of the skybox. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Appalachian 
lost their backup strong safety in practice this week, John Chastain, to a knee. Now Kornatzer is out, and it looks like they put Steve Kitchens in at the free safety that they have. Inside handball. And Jermaine Austin. Good carry after the 29. Rogers with the tackle. Georgia Southern, they're just staying basic. Stay with the fullback. It's going to get lost in there, and now he pops out. 13 carries, 110 yards. Austin's biggest game this year, the Gardner Webb game, 160 yards. They give it to him again, and this time. He is met by Mr. Jeffries. And what they're trying to do also is put the defense to sleep. Because as soon as they go to sleep, two things will happen. Chaz Williams will pull it out. He will go down the line of scrimmage, run the option. Or they will go over the top of the big pass play as they did in the first half. Second and nine. He is something. Jermaine Austin to the 42. I tell you, he's definitely asserted himself in this football game. And if he can continue to run the football, as he says, so far this particular halfway, the first half as well, I think he will make these folks forget about Adrian Peterson for a long time. If he could even approximate what AP did here. He'll go into the Hall of Fame. Timeout. Georgia Southern. It was Adrian Peterson for over 6,000 yards in his stellar career at Georgia Southern. The best back in one double-A history. This young man, Jermaine Austin, is here to say, it's my turn now, and he's having a whale of a game. In 1999, Georgia Southern won the fifth of its six national championships, and the aforementioned Adrian Peterson was outstanding when it mattered the most. 25 carries, 247 yards, and scored three touchdowns as Georgia Southern became the first team to win five one double-A titles. Peterson denied last year. They lost in the playoffs. Ended his uh, fantastic career just a couple of steps shy of another championship. But now he finds himself in the National Football League with the Chicago Bears. You know, and he was a not a, a first-round pick, but down in the draft a tad, and it may work to his advantage given the new salary structure in the National Football League. A guy with talent that's going to be not a high-end guy in terms of salary is going to get his chance. I think you're right. I think he's, he's an exceptional talent, and I think the reason he was drafted in the lower rounds because people didn't know if he could catch the football out of the backfield. Cornats are back in at free safety for Appalachian as Williams wants to pass. He's going to Owens over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. And they went right after Cornatzer. And there was a little touching, but love taps, as we like to say. They were. <laughs> Cornatzer pushed him in the back, but he got away with one. So a rare pass and incomplete for Owens. Georgia Southern leading the universe again in rushing yardage in one double A at 407.8 per game. And that just and shows consistency. You know, staying with something that simple and look at today. But today just 196. But the big number is 24-13 on the scoreboard. Jermaine Austin to the 46 yard line. It will be third and long. And again talked about today that Georgia Southern third and long is not uh, not one of their strong suits making no, that conversion no it's not and Appalachian State defensively they need to get off the field and get their offense on the field because sooner or later the clock is going to come into play with them trying to score points and play catch up 238 clock ticking third quarter and movement and a penalty They become the cardiac kids for so long, sooner or later it catches up with you. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. I 
That was a big break for the defense. And now they're back to a, a passing situation. I mean, they may come out and run it. Third and 11, and we've talked about the fact that Georgia Southern has not converted a third and longer than 10 this season. It's third and 11 here as Williams runs the option, but taken down. And they'll be forced to punt the football. So, second time that Appalachians forced punts here in the third quarter. Well, KT Stovall chases it down from behind. He and Josh Jeffries, I think, when you look at the fourth quarter, you know, they're going to be the key to stopping this Eagles offense. And offensively, Joe Prochett must get his team going because he's going to have to have to hit some big plays down the stretch. Scott Shelton is the punter. Devon Folks is the deep man. Beautiful punt. Folks will return it. Can he get to the outside? A little bit of a seam up the middle to the 20. A minute 29 remaining in the third quarter. Critics are calling the best damn sports show period a two-hour frat party with irreverent skits, insightful interviews, and sharp locker room banter. The best damn sports show period every weeknight at 8 and 11 only on Fox Sports Net. When are we going to get you on that show, Ethan? I need your help. Can My you help, help me? Yeah, I need you to help me out. Help me get there. I'll make a phone call Monday. Please do. <laughs> Forty two yard punt nine yard return and now the Mountaineers with Joe Burchett at the helm They'll swing it out to the near side and the return is taken by a rather the pass play taken by Chris Thomas and Thomas over the 30 to the 31 yard line another first down for the Mountaineers I think they're just trying to get a much bigger back in the passing game I mean, Thomas, you're bringing in a freshman, so you must have some confidence in him. I mean, you take out that small back, Sean Jackson. Chris Thomas has caught uh, four balls this year coming into the game. One 17-yard pass. And that's Appalachian, a first down here. It's the carry. And over the 40. Over the, uh, to the 40, I should say. Marcus Progress at the 39. 5'9", 195 pounds is Chris Thomas from Safety Harbor, Florida. And he has been called on to rush the football only five times this year, but his per carry average, Ethan, is 12.6. That's phenomenal, but I think also they're looking at a changeup. I mean, here's a guy that hasn't played. Defensively, they haven't seen him. They're used to seeing Jackson and Beard, and he's already shown the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, so he gives him a little diversity. Final seconds of the third quarter. In the shadows at Paulson Stadium. Burchett firing over the middle, and it's incomplete. As Andrew Layton was the intended receiver. Elsewhere around the Southern Conference today. Homecoming at Furman. They lead the Citadel by 14. Finals, Wofford over Western Carolina, 31-24. And East Tennessee that knocks off Elon 31 to 15. VMI at UTC later tonight. Third down and short. Third and two. At the Mountaineer 39. Eric Hadley. Eric McIntyre. Ready up front for the Eagles. Burchett. Time. Throws complete first down. Hoover makes the grab. Good catch. Bumped out of bounds by Keys. Joe Prochet just guns this one. And Hoover's in the flat. They flood one side of the field. And he has a choice. One, two, three. He takes his third option. Wide open in the flat. See, he's going to put something on this one. He Hoover was not is going to be denied. Hoover's gaining a reputation of being quite the possession possession receiver. Well, uh, last week this he team. came up big time for this football team. He doesn't catch money, but when he does, they're big plays. First and ten. Burchett. All day. Gets away once, but not twice. Everything covered up, and Hadley finally brought him down. 
Three that quarter is in the books in Statesboro. Sports Nets. And a dandy in one double A from Statesboro, Georgia, the home of the Eagles, 24 13, Georgia Southern. Ant Williams, a 93 yard kickoff return for touchdown. First time that a Southern player has done that to open a game since November of 1983. Beard, 83 rushing yards for Appalachian, all in the first half, zero yards in the third quarter. And the quarterback of the Mountaineers, Joe Burchett, 13 of 25 for 133 yards. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, Paul Cranes on the sidelines. Here's Burchett looking, throwing down to the sideline. Folks try to one-hand catch, and it's incomplete. Now he was wide open on that play, and Joe just missed him. I don't know if the sun is a factor in setting on that side of the field and him not being able to see the receiver, but these are the type of plays now in the fourth quarter that this team will have to convert. Third down, 17 yards to go. Eagles fans up. On the near side, Gary Moore's contingent of Mountaineer fans on the far side. Here's Burchett. He looks, he throws, it is complete. And shy of the first down, but making the grab is Leach. Torres Leach, the wide receiver from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Scott rang his bell at the end of that play. A punt coming up for Nate McKinney. Now he boomed one. 57 yards in his last punt. He could use another one right here. And Williams is the deep man for Georgia Southern. Hangs it high. And has to call for fair catch and makes it at the eight yard line. Well, Appalachian was unable to, to move it to get into scoring position, Ethan, but they did pin Georgia Southern inside the 10. That field position battle is always crucial. It's very crucial, Bob, and this is the time of the, any game that defensively, if you haven't gotten anything going offensively, you have to come up with some big plays. And we've seen this App State defense come away with some huge plays late in ball games, and right now, this is the time that they need to come up with a big play. Breaks free. Penalty flag. Myers takes it all the way. But let's see what the penalty is all about. We had two flags thrown, one at the 26, and then another flag at the 37. Well, I think it's a face mask call, or it's holding on number 80, Carl Kearney. Face mask. Two-yard touchdown run from Mark Myers. And Jerry Moore can't be happy. That's just poor tackling, poor execution. I mean, you're still in this ball game, and you just let a kid run 92 yards for a score. I mean, Myers has shown breakaway ability just with his speed, but he really hasn't had an opportunity to get outside. This time he gets outside, and he just outruns everybody. Scott Shelton to try the PAT. Out of the Melvin Cox hold. Well, delayed reaction, <laughs> the jubilation on the sideline. Everybody had to wait to see what the penalties were all about. A big touchdown for Georgia Southern. Thank Cox taken down. So that keeps it a 17 point to spread, 30 to 13. One more look at Mark Myers on his 92 yard touchdown run for Georgia Southern. A timeout at Statesboro. Our score, the Eagles 30 and Appalachian State 13. College football Saturday continues on Fox Sports Net. 
with lightning-like swiftness. Georgia Southern has scored a 92-yard run by that man on your right, Mark Myers. And Georgia Southern has a 30-13 lead, frustrating Jerry Moore, the Appalachian head coach. As his ball club had gotten back in a position to make a move in this game, but all their hard work just went right out the window. Well, it's imperative now that they get seven points on the board, cut this lead to 10. Folks and Black, the deep men, folks, going back to take this one at the one-yard line. He's, he's going to hand it off on a reverse. 15 is Jay Lyles. Now Lyles reverses his field. You're going to see penalty flags all over the place. There's another one. <laughs> a flip. That's what happens when you do a 180. You can expect the flags to come flying. Josh Jeffries, 58. He has a first clip. But I don't know if I would have tried that right now, Bob, at this point in the game, because you need seven points. And they're going right now pretty much back to their own end zone. They haven't had great field position this entire second half, and now they've put themselves in a hole, and they'll have to drive the length of the field just to get points. And it was 24 13. Rock in the back on the receiving team. It's half the distance to the goal. First down. And Appalachia was looking at a tall order. 61 straight wins when leading after three. Jimmy Laycock's tribe of William and Mary turned the trick last in September of 97. But, you know, as a coach, you, you have to ask yourself the risk versus the reward on a reverse like that. Maybe not to play so much, but boy, when you reverse and then you turn the field and go the other way, almost assuredly going to get a penalty intended for folks in short. You're right, but, but I, I, I do agree with you, Ethan. That, you, you really have to say, you know, I've still got the whole quarter to work with. Right. When you reach into that bag of tricks, I guess if you pop it, it's a great play, but more often than not, I mean, the kid has to make an over-the-shoulder catch at the one-yard line that's that's tough play. A tough play. I mean, I realize they haven't had a lot of great returns, but at least they would have been moving in the right direction. Second and ten. Her check from his own end zone. In the blow on Sterling Hayward. He delivered the blow, Bob, and it goes back to what you and I were just talking about. Now this offense is forced to pass the football. Defensively, you stand back there, react, and get hit just like this. James Young, sophomore from Tampa. Was an all-conference performer a year ago, second team, and he knocked Sterling Hayward into next week. Well, those guys in the secondary, they know what's at stake. They got to throw the football. Third down and 10. Burchett, 14 of 29 for 144 yards. With the sun in his eyes. Throws it over the middle and complete to Thomas. Stumbles his way to the 14 and shy of the first down. A punt coming up for Appalachian. See, with better field position, they may have gone out on downs, but they would have had, I think, a better opportunity a mixing possibly the run with the pass opposed to just coming out now three passes and now they're back to the sidelines they'll be asking nate mckinney to bail him out again with a booming punt but even if he kicks the best punt of his career ant williams is going to have it around the 40 yard line williams that is 42. Nice sidestep. Stays in bounds or did it? Nope, he touched uh, the out of bounds marker at the 47, but the 47 of Appalachian. And wonderful field position for the Eagles. This fall, get your NFL fix a day earlier with the most outrageous, unpredictable NFL pregame show you've ever seen. Introducing the NFL show. Michael Irvin, Tony Saragusa, comedian Tommy Davidson coming your way the night before the kickoff. Tonight, it's after the Texas-Kansas State game. And you can see it again tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. right here on Fox Sports Nets. A 44-yard punt, an 11-yard return, and Georgia Southern 
now with the score and the clock in their favor. Chaz Williams at quarterback for the Eagles. And on the dive play, Jermaine Austin carries it to the 40, and we have a penalty flag. Looked like some premature movement for Georgia Southern. And Jermaine Austin just a little quick. And I think what has happened also with that App State defense, those guys are starting to tire. I mean, Josh Jeffries, he's on the punt Billy team. Billy shift on the offense, two men moving at once, five-yard penalty, replay, first down. He's on the kickoff return team. Leon Moore, same thing. KT Stovall, he's on special teams. So the front four of the Mountaineers, you know, they're playing a lot of minutes. Williams smothered, gets away, and a face mask, I believe, is coming up. We talked about Stuart Adams and his good pursuit from the middle linebacker spot. Jeffries was there as well. The ball at the 46 of Georgia Southern. And now they're saying the penalty will indeed go against Appalachian, so. Well, that's a big penalty because Williams was going to be thrown for a loss. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. So that makes it first and ten again. Well, the last two plays going to wipe each other out. You're exactly right. But that one hurts because Appalachian had to had gained some yardage from their defense. But they give it back on the penalty. First and ten. Williams to the 45. There's one other factor in this triple option. When you get ahead, and you start grinding it out on the ground, that clock right. continues to move. It does. Inexorably in time. <laughs> and, and you say, well, it's 12 minutes to go, still a lot of the fourth quarter, but it's a different clock when you're playing a triple option team. Well, you mentioned it right there, those numbers, 369 yards, total yards, the five in the first quarter. I mean, the Mountaineers need to tackle the football. Austin, good job by Menino jumped off his block and made the tackle. I think the only way they win this game is to force a turnover, and I think yes. it has to happen right now because they need the football back, and they need scores. Yeah, they've got to score three times. And they haven't gotten the turnovers today. Now, Georgia Southern laid it on the ground the second play of the game, but none since, and to their credit, they protected the ball. They played well with the lead. Appalachian for the year is plus one in turnover in the takeaway game. Williams with a throw back to a guard eligible McCoy. McCoy the grab and down to the 39 but shy of a first down. How about James McCoy with the reception? You talk about going to your bag of tricks. The tackle on a throwback screen. He must be pretty athletic for this to happen. I mean, he run the ball fairly well there. That's a play they've practiced all week. And McCoy made the grab. He turned down the Jets and just came up a little shy the first time. He ran out of gas. <laughs> he, picked, he picked up four yards. Hey, he's been blocking Jeffries all day. <laughs> and down goes the punter, Shelton. Boy, this... This could be very costly for Appalachian. Roughing the kicker. Boy, if you're going to bring it, you better block that punt. Because if you touch him, it's over. Let's see that again. I'm not so sure he wasn't blocked into the punter because Brandon Turner was coming off of a block, looked like to me. Personal foul, 
roughing the kicker on the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. I mean, I realize you can't see right there, he gets shoved by 19. I mean, he makes contact as well, but you have to look at the contact and where he was and where he is now. First and 10, Georgia Southern at the Appalachian 24-yard line. Running the football and running the clock. The order of business right now for the Eagles. At the 21, it will be second and seven. Chaz Williams. Williams has to keep it. Georgia Southern leading by 17. They're just a nine minutes and 20 seconds away from inflicting the first loss of the year on Appalachian State. And doesn't that uh, tighten things up? Furman is winning. Walford has already won today. You could have four clubs at the end of the day with one defeat. It's getting tight. It'll be a busy November for sure. Now that Furman Georgia Southern game in Greenville in November is looking to look like a huge game and we'll have it for you on Fox Sports Net. That's November the 9th. Inside to Austin. The Eagles are in no hurry to run a play, get out of the huddle first of all, get to the line of scrimmage, run a play. As you alluded to it earlier, Bob, the clock now is their best friend. Just keep running. <laughs> no, don't right, stop. Take your time. <laughs> Wind that play clock down. Jermaine Austin, the redshirt freshman from Darien, Georgia. 19 carries, 134 yards. Nothing fancy. Just all part of this triple option attack. And they've given him the ball in a lot of ways. I mean, he's been out there as a pitch back. He's been the power back inside, left and right. And he's really, I think, worn down this defense by himself. Eagles take a timeout with 8.06 left in the fourth quarter and a 30 to 13 lead over Appalachian. Stay with Hurricanes. You know, they took you to the finals last year. They did. Struggling here this first week and a half of the new season. Well, they're in Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough said? <laughs> hey, you wanted to move the franchise to Charlotte? Well, I'm pretty sure Chuck Amato would like that one. <laughs> Chaz on the give and taken down is Kevin Davis. First time we've seen Kevin today, the sophomore from Folkston. A versatile guy, West coming over to make the tackle. Kevin Davis was a quarterback on a Class A state title team, played a, as a defensive back in uh, some of the All-Star games and now finds himself as a slot back here at Georgia Southern. Now, if I'm on the defensive side of the football, I just pin my ears back and rush the quarterback. Secondary-wise, you don't let anybody get behind you because the Mountaineers, they have to throw the football. Taking it over on downs, Joe Burchett from the 17. Folks, out of bounds. Smart play. Save some time. 7.54 is what the clock is showing here in the fourth quarter. I know they're going to huddle, but I would like to see the Mountaineers get into their two-minute offense because, mm -hmm. you know, we've touched on the ball. They need the ball back. I mean, the longest pass play, 17 yards. I don't think that's going to get them down the field. Appalachian down 17 as Burchett works out of the gun. Pressure, throws, and it's incomplete. Burchett hit as soon as he released the football. Now 16 of 32 in the game. Brandon Turner was the intended receiver. I've been very impressed with the secondary 
for the Eagles because coming into the game, I felt like the Mountaineers are going to be able to take some shots down the field with their receivers, their playmakers. And the secondary has really taken them out of the game. I mean, those guys haven't been able to uncover. They haven't really found a lot of space out there. He's been basically man coverage on the outside. Incomplete, out of bounds. Is Andrew Layton after the catch? Fourth down. Well, let's tip our cap to those men in the secondary. That's David Young, the strong safety. Free safety, James Young, A.K. Keys. Number 16 right there. The penalty is against Appalachian. See that flag, but it will be declined. And Nate McKinney, whose right leg may be four inches longer than his left leg after this game, he's punted so much. Has after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, half the distance to the goal, fourth down. So now McKinney will be forced to punt it to that man, Ant Williams, from his end zone. He needs to put his leg into this one. Seven forty two left in the game. This is the eighth punt by McKinnon. Off the side of his foot when he needed to boom it. Shanks won and it's out of bounds at the thirty eight yard line. Time out in Statesboro. 30 to 13 Eagles. For Georgia, Bob Rath beneath the Horton, Paul Crane. Happy to have you with us for Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net. A Georgia Southern team that had its backs to the wall coming in. Could not afford a second conference defeat. Said it was a must win. And they have responded, leading 30 to 13. Williams with some daylight to the outside. Jeffries over there, along with Derek Black to make the tackle but that clock keeps on a moving it does ASU has not been able to defend this offense I mean until they hit that big third down play in the first half I mean this offense really hasn't done anything I mean Z Walden down the middle they were flat the crowd wasn't in it they hit it crowd gets in it defensively they rise to the occasion and they've been rolling ever since but I think when you have to look at what they've done they've been very consistent on both sides the second quarter today was the whole game. I agree. Williams grinds it to the 31. And to touch on that just a little further, Bob, it, it's almost as if the Eagles picked it up and the Mountaineers packed up. I mean, really, because they never came back and answered. I mean, yes, they did come back after the turnover and put points on the board. Mm -hmm. The Eagles, they came back, but they never really were able to sustain anything else on offense. And really defensively, I think they've been out there for a long time. Georgia Southern plays in Charleston next weekend at the Citadel. Myers taken down. Not a good play by Nigel Rogers. Georgia Southern has controlled the football for over 13 minutes here in the second half, time of possession. And when you do that, you just wear down the other team. And Jermaine Austin, you can't say enough about him. I mean, coming into the game, the coaches were concerned about the youthfulness of this offense. Really, with he and Chaz Williams, how would they respond to the pressure of a big game? I think they really answered those questions. I think, too, one of the big keys, we talked about it in that first half, was the way this game started, how Appalachian was controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Georgia Southern, you know, as you mentioned, they didn't have the momentum, weren't making very many big plays. But in that second quarter, yeah. things changed. Mm -hmm. And Georgia Southern was able to control the football, get the option play working, and conversely, Appalachian was having all kinds of problems offensively. They had two three and outs, four punts in, on, in all in that second quarter. So that was your ball game. Paul Crane 
Well, Bob, before this school became Georgia Southern, it had two other nicknames, Blue Tide and Professors. But in 1959, the athletic department let students vote, and they voted Eagles. Now, a hawk lives near the practice fields, and the players call him the Georgia Southern Eagle, and he, when he flies by during the week during practice, players consider that a good sign. Now, this fella, this is the real deal. And now we'll send it back up to a man who knows all about hawks, Bob Rathman. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I tell you what, if that guy could dunk a few, we'd be in good shape. I'd take him back to Atlanta. <laughs> so you, you recruited you one, huh? I, I, the real deal. <laughs> I'd like to show, take him to practice <laughs> on Monday. Here, fellas, take a look at this. 20 to 13 Eagles. And Williams unable to get away from KT Stovall. A timeout in Statesboro with just over five minutes to play. 30 to 13, Georgia Southern. Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Final moments of our game. Appalachian has taken over on downs. And they have it first and 10 at the 45 yard line of the Mountaineers. Joe Perchette working out of the shotgun. Has time. Now gets sacked. Victor Cabral with the sack for the Eagles. Cabral's played a pretty good game today. Yes, he has. Very active. Sophomore from Tampa. Uh, excuse me, Naples, Florida. And there were concerns about Cascada, but I mean, the big boys up front. Dark colored uniforms. I mean, those guys have been pressuring the quarterback all afternoon. Jose White. And he's out of bounds at the 48 yard line. And that was another thing, Bob, because you touched on it earlier. With Freddie not playing, I think it caught his teammates off guard early. Mm -hmm. They were a little soft. And now they have really control, like you said, from the second quarter on this ball game. But I think it was just. Feeling like, okay, we can do this without him. And I'm pretty sure he was down there cheering his teammates on. And, I mean, that's something else that we've seen out of this defensive football team. And that's what Mike Sewak was telling us in the meetings yesterday, how this whole team has had to make that adjustment. Hey, it's our ball club now. AP's gone. We got a new head coach. We have a new quarterback. It's the guys that are here now that have to make the plays. And, hey, you lose a guy like Freddie Pescada. Yeah, that's your defensive leader, all-conference yeah. defensive player of the year from a year ago. He's gone. you got to regroup. And to give Georgia Southern their due, they struggled in that first quarter, but then made the necessary adjustments. Burchett is 19 of 37. Mountaineers down by three scores. Fourth and seven. They have any chance they must convert here. And they do. The grab is made on the far sideline by Hayward for the first down. And they'll mark it at the 43. But time is fleeting. I would think, uh, Ethan, that they've got to start throwing the ball toward the end zone. They do. Joe delivers it over the middle. Incomplete. Off the hands of Chris Thomas. Well, that's a pass play the freshman should have come up with. But when you're in the middle of the field, and I don't want to take anything away from this kid, but you have a lot of eyes in the back of your head, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Your, ribs, time. your ribs start hurting before the ball gets yes, there. It, yes, yes. <laughs> you take a look. Yeah, you can get the yips right quick. <laughs> <laughs> <Over the middle. laughs> Second attempt. Green grass in front of Jose White. It had to go down to get that throw. Well, we've seen that a few times. For Chet. 
to the 19. First down. So White comes back to make that grab. Senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Teaming with his senior quarterback, Joe Perchett. First and 10. Clock stops as they reset the chains. Perchett, 22 of 41. Just under 200 yards and incomplete. Stops the clock with 3.04 to play in the game. Another thing about this program, Bob, when you're successful, you're Georgia Southern, they have a lot of walk-ons. Mm -hmm. And 48% of the All-Americans, walk-ons. A penalty flag. <laughs> Andrew Layton made the catch, then the face mask against Georgia Southern. Twenty-five of their fifty-five All-Americans came in originally as walk-ons. That's what a what personal foul, face mask on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. That's what a one double-A program has to do. They don't have the scholarship numbers they have in one-A football, and in a football-rich right. environment like they have here in Georgia, they have been able to build a program from scratch and take it to the top of one double-A and keep it there. One double-A football gets 63 scholarships. Big boys get 80. Here is the running play by Burchett. Gets it down to the two. And having said that, Bob, it's recruiting, but also it's guys that want to play here. Yes. And be a part of something that's very special. Incredible tradition in a very short amount of time here at Georgia Southern. They defend the home field about as well as anybody in college football. To the end zone, incomplete. Trying to go to Sterling Hayward. That stops the clock with 2.19 remaining. Pichette takes another hit from 99, Shannon Williams. I think he's going to be a very sore young man riding back to Boone tonight. Well, you know, Burchett's frustrated. He's never won here. Joe's going to take it himself and in for the six. First rushing touchdown of the year for Joe Burchett to make it 20, uh, excuse me, 30 to 19. A 2.14 left. And Appalachian looking to go for two here, or are they? Let's I think see. they're going to nope. kick. Mark Wright is going to come in and kick, yes. But you know we will see an onside kick for sure. And the kick is good. Ten-point game. 30 to 20. Done here in Statesboro, Georgia. And uh, this game starting to set on Appalachian. They have somehow got to get the football back right now. There's still 10 down with 2.14 left. Well, I think Georgia Southern is going to cover up the football because, as I said before, we're definitely going to see an onside kick. I don't think they'll kick this ball deep. If they kick it deep, they'll kick it to a spot and hope those guys on the covers team can race to that spot and recover the football. Eric Rockhold is the man to kick it off for Appalachian. Looks like the Eagles have the hands team up front to cover this onside kick. Eric's ready. 
And it's recovered by Georgia Southern. Jazz Williams, if he hasn't already done enough today, <laughs> covers <laughs> for Georgia Southern. Our Pepsi player of the game today is none other than Jermaine Austin, 133 yards rushing. Our congratulations to the redshirt freshman. As Georgia Southern. I mean, here's a kid that's shown a lot of ability. And he's done it on the inside, breaking tackles, seeing the field. She got into the outside. And he just turns a corner right here, all speed. Loses his footing, should have had a touchdown. Quarterback Williams. Inside the 20 at the 18. This is the kind of football the fans are used to here in Statesboro. They are used to it. And again, defensively, you need to stop. Realize time is winding down, but who knows? Maybe a turnover, maybe you get the stop, get the ball back. Derek Black makes a big stop for the defense. I mean, they still have time, but time is not on their side right now. A 26-yard pickup. Williams closing in on a 100-yard day, rushing 98 yards. And he'll get the 100 right here as he jumps it down to the 14. Well, I don't think the backs will be fumbling the football because at Georgia Southern, they run gassers. They do up-downs when they fumble the football as punishment. Now, I wouldn't want to practice an entire day and come back and run gassers. <laughs> you wouldn't? No. And do up-downs after practice. I don't think so. This is the first time this season that Georgia Southern has had three backs gain 100 yards in a game. As today, Mark Myers, Chaz Williams, and Jermaine Austin have all gone over 100. Austin, 133. Myers, 105. Williams, 103. Timeout with 130 remaining here in Statesboro. Oh, that being the front runner that you are, I'm sure you're <laughs> getting on that devil's bandwagon. You're not going to make any friends in Raleigh. I don't think so. He didn't so. in college. No. <laughs> <laughs> so why should I now? <laughs> After last week, I don't think so. <laughs> That's right. For those of you who are not aware, Ethan Horton, one of the all-time greats, the University of North Carolina, who fell today, <laughs> we might point out, 37-27 in Charlottesville. Go out, grow. <laughs> to the seven-yard line with just over a minute to play. Williams to the four. Final minutes. And Georgia Southern said before the game it was a must win. The Eagles deliver. Mike just got drenched. But a lot of smiles on that sideline. Huge win for Georgia Southern. And it throws the Southern Conference race wide open once again. It does. I don't think he minds that bath. And he said it. Two losses, I don't think you have a shot. But now, you know, we've seen the standings. The winner will probably have to run the table. And yeah. that Furman Appalachian, uh, the uh, Furman Georgia Southern game now in Greenville, looming as a biggie. A second clock never started. Reset the game clock to 54 seconds. And these fans are happy. Do you think they'll storm the field? They'll probably save it for the playoffs. You know, they're used to playing 14, 15, 16 games down here. You're you right. <laughs> this is just another yeah, regular just season warmed game. Up. Yes. And 
now both clocks are rolling as they should. And Williams keeps it. Touchdown. Jazz Williams makes it 36-20. His third touchdown of the game. That was exclamation. And a very good outing by a sophomore quarterback and really the entire offense. Three guys over 100 yards. That's why this offense is very hard to defend. Because you have to pay attention to everyone. And that was very workmanlike because he took the ball pretty much down the field by himself. 117 rushing yards for Jazz Williams. And he's got to feel a great sense of pride and a great sense of relief, too, because the pressure was on him. The heat was there. This is a game that he had to step it up. Yes, he's had three good weeks to get ready for it, but he had to come through today at home, and he did. And this is his fourth 100-yard game as well, so you can see he's starting to understand what this offense is all about, and he definitely has taken the reins from J.R. Revere. On a penalty. Williams will take the knee with 34 seconds left. Take one more look at the Chaz Williams touchdown. And this is all Williams. See, nothing fancy. He runs over Nigel Rogers and gets into the end zone. When you have a back like Austin, everybody has to respect him. Which leaves the quarterback wide open. Dancing, you can see he likes it. <laughs> and these are the type of games when you have young players, they just gain a lot of confidence. You see Austin there. And I think he was really the key to this football game because he does so many things, or they do so many things with that fullback that if you watch him and continue to watch him defensively, it opens it up for everybody else. And with Austin having positive runs time at the time again you kind of forget about everybody else Georgia Southern 364 rushing yards in this game below their average for the past three weeks but I'm pretty sure they'll take it a must win in the conference you bet Derek Black is deep along with Folks. Folks is going to run this one down or is he no he's going to let it go it's out of bounds that's a penalty and the Mountaineers will take the ball at the 35. 36 to 20. Well, the Mountaineers should just take this one, bag it, and get ready for the next week because it's still a long season in a short time frame. Let's take a look at that Appalachian schedule. They're back home next week for Wofford. Play at Chattanooga in November. Home to VMI and close it at Western Carolina. We'll have that game for you on Fox Sports Net, November 16th from Cullowee. And Wofford has shown that that's a team to be reckoned with this season. They came here and won. I think that speaks volumes right there. I don't think it's a team that can be taken lightly. Georgia Southern plays at the Citadel next week. Then they host East Tennessee. Go to Furman in the aforementioned game on November 9th and have a non-conference game against Jacksonville State on the 16th of November. Jet hands it off to Hoover. And that will be the final play of the game. Two teams that you know, really don't like each other, but boy, there's great respect amongst the coaches and the players in this rivalry. And today, it belongs to Georgia Southern and new head coach Mike Seymour. Brethan Horton and Paul Crane. Bob Rath has so long for Paul Stadium in Statesboro. Georgia Southern wins it 36-20.